Okay, so today's topic is going to be about Aini and I'm joined today by Ivan Nunes del Prado, the son of uh, my other teacher, Juan Nunes del Prado. And um, yeah, as I said, we're going to talk about Aini, which is uh, the law of reciprocity. I can never say that word in the Andean tradition. And um, so Ivan, could you just tell us what Aini is for the benefit of anybody that hasn't studied the Andean tradition? Okay, uh, thank you. First, thank you for this great idea to share a little bit about these things we like so much. And to, this video helps us to share these things with other people, maybe somebody who's new to this tradition or who's wandering and looking for something new. And this is something really important for us. I need is for our tradition a really, really important point. It's a central idea of the whole Andean tradition. And uh, Aini is means reciprocity. Reciprocity as the act of giving and receiving. Now it's not just giving is not just receiving, it's both. And so Aini is to close the whole circle of giving and receiving. So for us, it's something very important. We understand that everything that happens in life is or can be understood as I, as an act of reciprocity. And if you really pay attention to that, we believe that this can help you to improve the quality of your life. That's the main, it's a main idea in the tradition. I need reciprocity. And can you explain um, the, the relationship of that with the universe and the Kausai Pacha? Well, for us, the Kausai Pacha is the whole universe, the cosmos. And the idea behind is that every one of us has a relationship of reciprocity with the whole cosmos. Okay, so when we are connecting with, connecting with other people, when we are interchanging with other people, we understand that those persons, the people who we are related, are a channel for the cosmos, for the interchange that you have with the whole universe. So it's part of your relationship with the universe. And we understand that we built and we can improve that connection with the universe that everything we do counts to this Aini relationship with the cosmos. In a certain ways, it's, it's a very important way to, to understand and to explain things for us. Do you think that sometimes people are, because they're not really engaging with the, the energies of the universe, that this is why there's like a disconnect almost and that they're, things maybe kind of go wrong in their lives? Yeah, sometimes we are not so conscious, we are not aware of how the things are happening or how the energies are flowing. And sometimes we, as we are not focused, seeing clearly the things, we may be hit by some energies and have some problems and they say, oh, I don't know where this came from. I have no idea. No? It's just the universe being bad with me <laughs> or it's a, something wrong. It's something wrong with me. Am I cursed? Maybe it is because you are not aware of the eye. You, know? you are not seeing the whole picture. Okay? Sometimes we see an event like an isolated thing. Okay, something just pops up in our life and they say, oh, wow, that's so wrong. Something is wrong, but I don't know what. I don't know why. Where, where did this came from? You know? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. So if you are not aware, then you are not going to connect certain things that may be important to connect. Mm -hmm. And then you will not have a, a clue of how, what to do, uh, how to behave in order to adjust your the energy in your life, you know? but the idea of finding maybe can help you to do that. Mm -hmm. If you are more aware of the things you do, and then you are more aware of the things that happen around you or happen to you, then you may start to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, 
Mm. And then you may start to steer your life to adjust the things you do in order to find the kind of things you will like to have. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the relationship of giving and receiving, you know, um, is where a lot of people kind of get caught up with the, the giving and the receiving. Some people are more uh, able to give and other people feel more uh, able to receive or take more uh, than than they than they need to. And uh, what sort of effect would that have on your Aini? Well, if you are not giving properly, if you are not giving well, you are going to slow down the flow. You are going to make it more difficult. And in the same way, when you are going to receive, because there are moments to give and moments to receive in life, you need to be in the right mood, in the right energy to be able to receive properly. Something about receiving. When you are in a moment of receiving, you have to make room in yourself to receive. You have to give room for what the things that are coming. And how do you do that? You need Humility. Humility is to recognize that something is missing in you. And when you recognize that you don't know how something or you don't have something, that is making room to hold it. Then when it comes, you are able to hold it and you are able to keep it, to contain what the universe is giving to you. Mm -hmm. I always remember that story of the Zen master who was with the student and the student came and so excited, started to talk and talk and talk and the master pours some tea in his cup and the, the other, the student was still talking and talking and talking and the master poured more tea on the cup and then after a while the, the student said, master, but you're pouring too much tea, it's all over the table. And they say, yes, you cannot pour anything in a cup which is already full. <laughs> To learn to get something, we need to make room. You know? mm. Some people say that the best way to learn or to make the best out of a moment is to just to be quiet and listen. <laughs> because if you listen, you are able to learn something. If you are just talking, you cannot learn a thing. It's just repeating the things you already know. Mm. So this can these little things help you to understand a little bit the moments of the eye. You know? The same thing, when you are giving, you need to be generous. You need to really give. Then some people say, oh, there are secrets, and I cannot tell you a secret. If you hold secrets to the universe or to the other people, then the universe will keep secrets from you, and there are things that you may like to know that you will never get to know because your eye is not working properly. Mm. So... Another thing I was going to say, I, I don't know whether it's uh, an Irish thing. I've, I've certainly discussed this with some of the other Ar Irish pa Pacos. Um, and I, I don't know whether maybe it's a trauma thing or something like that as well. But um, we seem to be, well, the people I've spoken to find it harder to receive something like because um, we feel like we don't deserve the thing that's been given to us. So we're like, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll have this kind of thing here in Ireland. Where we're like, you know, have another biscuit. Go on, go on, have this, have that. You know, it's always, always give, give, give. But we're really okay. hard at uh, receiving things here. And, you know, how how do you get over that? No, it's also interesting because these two moments, the moment of giving and the moment of receiving, put in different positions. It's easier to give, I think, because this puts you in a position of superiority. Yeah. You are the giver, you are the generous one, okay? You are the one who is giving and providing for others. So when you give, this puts you in a higher level. Mm -hmm. When you receive, this puts you down a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Because you are the one who's getting, you are the one who's receiving, you are maybe the poor one, <laughs> okay? And we don't like to be the poor one, hmm. okay? Because we have issues about it. We feel guilty, we feel ashamed, or things like that. Hmm. One of the things is that to really, really receive, you need to accept that you are lacking something, that you need something, or do you, you don't know something. Hmm. And sometimes we are ashamed of not having or not knowing things. 
So to be ashamed is not helping to learn. Because when you are ashamed of not knowing something and you have to you try to demonstrate that you know it and you make noise so, so nobody can see it, then you lose the opportunity to learn. And would that be similar to feeling like that you don't deserve? True, that's another thing, that's guilt. You don't deserve things. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the solution for that is to have a healthy connection with the universe. The universe gives you life. And if you are in this life, you deserve to be here and to enjoy what life is offering you. It's, it's there. Mm -hmm. So why should we? you feel guilty for receiving? Why you feel and incapable to receive or you don't feel worthy to, to receive something. Those are terms also little things that we carry and those little things are going to make us lose opportunities, to lose a moment. It's a good moment to receive and it's so beautiful to receive when you are able to do it, just to receive something that somebody is giving to you and to be able to hold it and uh, that's what life gives us all the time. Life offers us things all the time and or you are able to hold them and to receive them or they just pass in front of you and you just don't get them. <laughs> so it's also good to be aware of you, your INE because that will allow you and help you to take those opportunities that life is giving you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to start to feel that you really are worthy and you really deserve those things that they are in front of you is because you deserve it. You must have done something nice and then you can deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose that's, so that's like on a human level, this yeah. change of energy. And how would that play out in the the universe? And can you talk about the, you know, how um, maybe the three patches, the three worlds of? Um, for example, yeah, for example, it's a, I may can be also a way to understand how the universe works, how the reality is, and to understand uh, what's happening around you. According to our tradition, you know, the causa y pacha, the cosmos, have three different levels. The upper world, or Hanak Pacha, uh, is the world of the spirits, is the world of God, is the, the, the highest quality energy in this reality. And the tradition says that Aini is perfect in the upper world. So the beings that live in that world and the spirits and God, they are good in practicing the Aini. So they have a very strong interchange. They are giving and receiving strongly and actively. Therefore, the energy up there in the Hanak Pacha is fine. It's the highest quality of energy. So in that way, you can understand why we search for that light, we search for that to connect with this energy, because we know it is a, it's a source, it's a place of light energy, of good quality energy, mm -hmm. because the eye is good there. Mm -hmm. When you come down to this world, the Kai Pacha, okay, Kai means this here, this world where we live, the human level, the human life world, you know that sometimes you receive and sometimes you give. Okay? But sometimes you decide to keep for yourself or you reject things, so you block the Aini. The flow of the Aini is not perfect in this world, in the Kaipacha. Mm -hmm. And that's why our life is a mixture of light and heavy moments. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the energy is flowing, because sometimes there is Aini, and sometimes the energy is blocked because there is no Aini. So there are two possibilities. Some We are, of course, generous with our children, with the people we love and everything, but not with everybody. So in those moments, we are holding. We are not giving. We are not uh, letting go. There's no generosity with people you don't know or you don't like sometimes. Mm -hmm. okay. And at the same time, sometimes if somebody offers you something and then you reject it, you say, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't like it from you. or I don't like it in that way. So there are many ways to just reject. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when you reject, the energy stops flowing. It gets blocked. You know? And then the INE is not perfect. So in this life, there are heavy moments and light moments, and it depends of whether if the energy is flowing or not. 
And basically, we live in that world, which is a mixture of light and heavy. Our life experience is that. Nice moments and heavy moments, one after the other, it's a combination of things. That's a normal life in this world. Mm -hmm. And finally, the underworld, the Uhupacha, the tradition say, in the Uhupacha, there is no proper Aini. Okay. The quality of the energy in the Uhupacha, the underworld is lower or heavier if you want. In a certain way, we see it as it, it is filled with heavy energy. Why? Because there is no Aini. There is no improper interchange of things. We see that in the underworld, there is another kind of interchange, which is more mechanic. And this interchange is called Chalai. Chalai is a mechanic interchange. It's like, I give you something, and then you have to give me something in return. It's mechanical. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like when you go to the shop and you get, you want to buy a, glass, a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go to the shop, you get the bottle, you pay for it, the transaction is over. You don't have to call the owner of the store ever again <laughs> because you did pay already. You don't have to keep the relationship. Okay, so this connection of interchange just lasts for a moment, for a second, and then, then, then it dies. It's, it stops moving. Mm -hmm. In the same way, if you enter to, to a place and you want you grab something, there's a moment of tension between when the moment when you grab the thing and, after, and then the moment when you pay. There's a moment of tension because you may just run away and not pay, right? And then something will be wrong. Okay, so, but as soon as you pay, the transaction is over and then the energy stops moving. It's blocked again. Mm -hmm. So in the underworld, the idea is that there are those interchanges of energy, but are momentary, momentary. It's just an instant. Mm -hmm. It's not a continuous flow. It's a little bit like the stock market. Everybody's greedy and wanting to take advantage of everyone else, and they really don't care. They just make business. Basically, the idea of business as we know them today, <laughs> very greedy and interested interchange. As, as far as you have money, you're my friend. When you don't have money anymore, I don't care about you. It's, it's really similar to the chalet. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's greedy people trying to take advantage of the other things like that, no? Yeah, yeah. So Chal, I, I always just understood as being like a monetary kind of thing. Um, yeah. I'm understanding a wee bit more from talking to you as as being just a lower kind of energetic exchange. Yeah. Speak about that a wee bit more. Well, the. Aini is more open. Mm. So you consider, you really believe that uh, is not an in, a mechanical interchange with one person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's Chalai, if I give something to you, then you will have to give me something in return. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, something will be very, very wrong between us, okay? Because you cheat, cheated me. You take something and you didn't pay for it. <laughs> that is Chalai. When you think in terms of Aini, if you give me something and for some reason there's not the opportunity and I can honor that and give you something in return, you know that somehow the universe will find a way to honor that in my place. And you will receive from somebody else. Or if you do something nice for a person, then this energy will travel around and then somebody else completely unconnected and related with this situation will give you something in return. Mm -hmm. It's a wider understanding of the interchange. It's not mechanical. Mm -hmm. okay, if, if I never uh, found the opportunity to honor something you give to me, I will not feel guilty either. Maybe I have the intention, but then I couldn't do it. And I will not feel like in depth with you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I can also trust that if I was not able to do it, the universe will, will give you something in return, something to, to harmonize, to compensate that lack of myself. Mm -hmm. So it's not so rigid. And then he, this gives you a really lighter relationship with the, end, in, with the interchange. You know? 
because you can be just giving things to people and not expecting them to pay you back because you trust the ID, because you know somebody else, somehow you are going to receive something in return, okay? So it's not a business anymore. It's not a trade, the mechanical thing. The ID is lighter. It's just to know that everything in life is flow and is giving and is receiving. And in some moments you are going to give and in some moments you are going to receive. So it's not just about the, the bartering in business, that, that kind of back and forth, I'll give you this and you give me that, but also with um, if you are taking something and either not giving credit for it or if you like the way we are with uh, Pachamama at the minute and we're just take, take, take and there's nothing given back, you know, you're not honoring the Aini, you know, so I mean, if you're not making an offering or giving thanks for the food that's there, or um, is, would that be like Chalai as well? Yeah, if you are not aware and you can just, and you just keep taking and taking and taking, this is creating a disbalance. Mm -hmm. At the moment we are in a disbalanced moment, even well, now more and more people is getting aware of taking care of the environment and the pollution. More and more people is growing this awareness, but this is something new. Mm. Okay, before nobody really take care of the environment. This is something that is just emerging and is just growing. Even the old traditions were not really about the environment. We are the first generations who really, who could really really harm the environment and soon we are going to be paying for that so if you don't get aware of that and we don't start to take our measures and to start to take care of nature well our children will pay for that or maybe in our lifetime we are going to see the effect of that so you now we have been taking for too long we have to give something in return reorganize clean the things and we are moving in a good direction the rivers, for example, today are cleaner than 50 years ago. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All were polluted. You could not swim in, in the rivers next to cities because everything was polluted. And this is getting better. Mm. You know? Now you can fish in the rivers next to towns and you can eat that fish, which is not, is not polluted anymore. Mm. So we are moving, sometimes too slow, but we are moving in the right direction. And more and more people is taking awareness of that, and that's a good thing. There's a wee bit of it kind of going backwards, though, with the global warming and all of the natural disasters that are kind of going on in the world at the minute, you know, with the sea levels rising and forest fires. And yeah, <laughs> just built a lot of huge here. But... Yeah, no, the thing is, we are responsible for that at the moment. Yeah. We have the power to break things but we also have the power to fix them and so we should take the measures now mm -hmm. it's a matter of power we can do that but it needs awareness you need to be conscious of what you are doing so to find the right ways to do it and maybe these people that are not really um aware of what they're doing and the take 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 all the time it's it's just having this knock-on effect and hopefully they'll start to learn about things like Aini and <clears throat> being able to look after the environment as well. Exactly. Yeah. I think awareness is the most important thing. When you're aware of the things, when you're conscious about your behavior and the things you do, then the results are going to be good. Okay. If you are not conscious and you're just doing what you are told to do and then you don't make your own decisions really, then it just builds heavy energy. It's not, uh, it's not flowing well. But awareness is always a solution. A fierce awareness of your eye knee. So if you are aware of your eye knee and you take care of it, uh, you are going to start to see very quickly how the results are coming back to you. That's a natural way of seeing it. So I have another question. Um, and this is one that gets asked quite a lot. Is eye like karma? And like, it, and I know, like, from studying, you know, but when I was doing my yoga teacher training, they talked about like instant karma. So it's not mm -hmm. just happening in the next lifetime, but it's actually happening in this lifetime. 
so it, it would only be like karma in, in some senses yeah definitely mm -hmm. uh, this is is the fact that things you do are going to return back to you and as you say, the way we understand Aini is like instant karma. It's not something that's going to come back to us in the next incarnation, but it's going to return back to us in this life very quick. So we are going to receive the feedback for our actions very quickly. You know, and we, we will be able to see them. And if we are conscious of them, then we are going to have the capacity to adjust our behavior faster you know, and improve the quality of our life faster. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is definitely like instant karma. It's like you did something and then it will return back to you very quick and you will be able to see it. But in certain way, Aini is, is particular because the idea of Aini also tells us that energies grow on the way. So you are going to give something, but while it's returning back to you, this is going to grow. So what you get back in return as a feedback from the universe for the things you did is going to be bigger than what you gave in the first place. And that makes it really interesting in both directions. Because if you do something light and you do something nice for a person, Somebody else, not necessarily that person, is going to do something nice for you, but bigger, nicer, more powerful. But be aware of doing heavy things, because when you do something heavy, this heavy thing will return back heavier and bigger later to you. you know? So even when you are not a really nice person inside, if you are a little bit clever, then the idea of me can also help you to adjust your behavior. Because you will not be sending heavy things if you know that they are going to hit you back in the face very soon. <laughs> if if they are going to come back in next life, well, well, we can give it time and no problem. But if it is going to come back in two weeks, maybe you it's better to be aware of it and 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 just adjust your behavior and not do heavy things. And also, I think if you're if you're not thinking about it being so say that the person that you um are having the interchange with and they're maybe not aware of the INE and um they're, they're still not responding in a, a positive way back to you that even you have to like maintain the way that you're being towards them because it'll eventually return back to you in, a, in another form exactly. and, yeah so just be nice to everybody absolutely now the thing is well after a while you start to see i need and to understand the i need as a law of nature mm -hmm. like gravity you no know, if i if i grab this pen and then i know that the gravity is a law of nature i know that if i let go this will go down this will fall down I know. So I can do things trusting on gravity. And I will not do things trusting in gravity too. If I let go of my glass, I know it's going to break in the, on the floor. Okay. So when you are aware of the I need to the point that you start to see that it is like a law of nature, that things are going to naturally flow back and forth to you from the whole universe. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Because really, you will start to focus in your action. And you will stop focusing in the result of your action. Because you know that when the action is good, you don't have to worry about how or where or how or from when is going or from who is going to come back. Now, it, you, when you start to trust the INE, you know it's going to come back. But then you detach from the consequences of your actions and you can just focus in the doing and be in the present, just doing well. And while you are doing well, you can trust it. And then you are going to start to see how it keeps flowing. And then you don't have to count. At the beginning, I remember, I used to count. I was doing something and then when you return back, I say, okay, one return back, two return back. I was just making taking my measure you know mm -hmm. 
and recording how much it would come. And, and I, then, then I started to see that you don't have to count. <laughs> you don't have to check when it returns back because if you just keep doing, it will keep returning back and you can trust it. The important thing is you have to keep putting things. You have to keep planting things. No? It's like being a farmer. Okay, they can be good years, they can be bad years, but you keep farming because you have faith in the ground, in the soil, in the water and the sun. You know something is going to happen. When things go wrong, it's because you didn't plant the, the previous year. When you don't plant a thing, the next year you have nothing. <laughs> but to do and live in that way, you have to trust the universe. You know? Yeah. So, so if your working life, you should always, even even if things aren't going great, you could keep like planting the seeds for things to go better. Yeah. It always gives me that hope because there's, you know, if I'm going through like a difficult time, I know, right, okay, I just need to keep working on the mm -hmm. eye and I need to keep, you know, planting the seeds and keep working on it. So in, in some ways, is it, do you think it's like the law of attraction? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's another way to describe it. Yeah. The law of attraction, I think, I'm not an expert in it, <laughs> I have to confess. But I think it says that if you are in certain quality of energy, if you are in certain state, then you are going to attract things that resonate with that state, right? Mm -hmm. And so in certain ways, it's related, you no? Know? It's another description, of course. Okay, every tradition have and describe things in a, in, in a way. So this is a slightly different description of the same phenomenon. That the universe resonates with us and what we do. And then you can tell that then the things will come to you. <laughs> or you, like when you think in terms of irony, you will think that things are returning back to you, which is a different description. But at the end, the phenomenon, I think, is the same. And if you just are able to focus in the proper action today, you know that you are planting. So what we are doing today, recording this video and talking about Aini is planting. Mm -hmm. This is going to affect our lives in certain time. After a certain time, one day we are going to talk again and we're going to say, you see, we planned this about Aini and now the Aini is coming back. <laughs> we will be able to see it. So then we can focus in just making the best out of this moment and you can just don't worry about the results because you know they are going to be nice if you do it well now so you can take any as a law of nature if you want yeah by gravity and trust it so um i can never say this word i need a is that right um, I need and in a quick piece, is this is this what um when people have had like a vision of uh where kocha this is this what he says is i nina quichis exactly that? so and what every is time in the andes the people have experiences with wiracocha which is the name we give to the metaphysical god mm -hmm. they always report that they have this insight okay that the spirit of this meeting the the, the the direction or the advice that Wiracocha gives to them was Ainakuchis, which means practice, be aware of the Aini. Okay, and this is the only commandment we have in the Andes. So a commandment is an advice of God to make a good life. So Wiracocha, our metaphysical God, always does and gives that commandment. So we only have one. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and a commandment like this is like the commandments of Jesus. Jesus have three commandments, no? Love God with all your, your heart, with all your strength, and with all your mind over everything. Love your fellows as you love yourself. That's the second. And the third commandment of Jesus is the most difficult one, and it says, love your enemy. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are advices of Jesus, who for the Christians is God, to have and make a good life. So if you're a Christian and you follow these advices, certainly you are going to make a good life. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the Andes. Our God gives us this advice, this is our commandment, 
And if you follow this commandment, you can be sure that things are going to be just well. But as we are, a moral, are not a moralistic tradition, this commandment is not telling you what to do and what not to do. It's just telling you, be aware. <laughs> I knew reciprocity is a law of nature. It will take place every time and never fails. So you can trust it very well. Mm -hmm. And the advice is, so be aware of your eye. What does it mean? Just pay attention to the things when you are doing them, when you are sending energy out, and pay attention to the things when you are receiving, when you are getting back the feedback from the universe. If you are aware of this signing, you are going to see how the things work. And then it will be easier for you to make a high quality life because you learn and you know how the things work. So the advice is be aware of your writing, be aware of the giving, be aware of the receiving. And if you have the full picture, certainly you are going to be able to, to navigate through life and to make the best out of it. That's the advice. And in general, I need mean, for us is, is, is the main value of life. Mm -hmm. We have this idea of the good life. Mm -hmm. It's called Ayin Kausai. Ayin Kausai is a good life. It's the concept of how life should be. And there is a saying, to make Ayin Kausai, you need good Ayin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to, to build a good life, you need to be aware of the Ayin in relationship with everything that happens in your work, in your family, with other people, that is a causa, a good life. Have a good relationship with everything around you and the family and life in your daily life. So there's this idea. No? Good life implies good idea. Again, and it, it's a recurrent. It, it's been told over and over and over again. Aini is a very important thing. Mm. Hmm? So we have this as a principle because it helps us to understand how the universe works, like with Hanak Pacha, Kai Pacha, and Hupacha. Aini is a value because it's a guiding line for making a good life in this world. And Aini is also a commandment. It's an advice that we receive from God to build a good life. And as you can see, it's a very, very important thing in our tradition. It's a main thing. Mm. And so when we're doing our Samin Chakwi and Saiwa Chakwi, we're engaging with the universe and with all of nature. And then would Hucha Mihui be uh, when we take the heavy energy of another human being? Uh, is that Aini as well? or uh, And is it Karpa or is Karpa Aini the only kind of uh, exercise that we do that we're exchanging? Um, making the exchange of Aini. Mm -hmm. So in that vision, every single thing we do as a practice of as an energy work in the tradition, all the practices that we learn and, and use, they all are about Aini. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, the formal initiation that we use, the Karpa Aini, you know, it is a giving and receiving of personal power. It's an interchange of initiations and personal power. But every time when you try to help another person to get rid of their heavy energy, their hucha, you are doing something good for a person. You are helping a person. If we understand that this is improving your credit of Aini with the cosmos. Maybe this person will not help you back, but the universe, the universe will. And he will help you and support you as you are supporting other person. So it's in every single thing we do. In the work with energies, we really trust that the I need is behind everything. Every connection, every time we receive energies or send energies is part of our I need. And I suppose it's like you don't you can you can always find measure in it, you know, that's this is what I love is that you can really um see experience it and see how it's actually happening in your life the more you're aware of it then you the more you'll kind of see mm -hmm. for yourself yeah if, uh, i always say a little bit if you use aini as your glasses if you see things through aini it's going to be easier to explain 
see it. For example, many times in life, we have a job and we feel that we don't get paid enough for what we do. This is a sensitivity of the reciprocity because you feel that you're giving certain amount of energy and then you are not giving the feedback in the way you are supposed to in money, okay? The money that you get for your effort is not enough. Mm. Somebody normally is happy when at the work receives enough money for the effort. When it's in harmony, then you arrive with your work. Mm. Okay? Or when you receive the kind of things you are waiting for. It's not just money. It's also recognition and respect. But it's all about reciprocity. Mm. When you are in a relationship, for example, and I, I heard this a lot in a couple relationship. Many, many times people say, you know, I am the one who gives all the time. I am the giver, but I am not receiving re something in return. I feel that I deserve to receive something and I'm not getting it. Mm. Then you feel that your relationship is not okay. When you feel that the, the energy is coming back, that there is a good feedback, that your relationship is fine or your work is fine. And also another thing about relationships and connections is that many times we give something and we expect the other in a certain way to pay us back, to return back the same thing, the same kind of thing. Some, some people say, well, I give love and I'm not receiving love. So I'm not okay. But this is a mechanical way of seeing it. Sometimes you can give love and you can receive Respect in return. And that can be enough. But it's not love, because love and respect are not the same thing. But if you expect to receive, to receive the same thing, it's like a mechanical thing. It's like something is missing there. This feeling of retribution doesn't necessarily have to be mechanic. I always put this example. If I have coffee and I offer you coffee, and then I demand you to give me coffee in return, how boring. I have a cup of coffee, I gave it to you, and then I get it back. And it is like nothing happened. Mm. But if what if I offer you a cup of coffee and you give me cookies? Then we have breakfast together. <laughs> this is the idea of Aini. If you expect and force the other to give you back in the same way you want, maybe you are losing something. The possibility of variety, the possibility of transformation that maybe it should be part of the Aini relationship. Mm. It's the expectation to get something yeah, back. And exactly. You're because you're expecting something and then you don't get the thing that you're expecting and then you're, that really <laughs> creates a lot more hucha. So, yeah, definitely. But the thing is, if I just put my expectation on you and I make you give me something exactly the way I want it, I'm losing the expectation, the, the possibility of receiving something different. The possibility of receiving something like you can sincerely and nicely give me something that you have that maybe I don't even know you have. Okay? If I give you something and I expect the same to return back, that is chalai, that is okay, that is uh, uh, business. I'm buying something and then, then I get something in return. Mm -hmm. It's rigid, it's mechanical. I need is open. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you and helps you to respect the others because the others offer you kindly what they have to offer, <laughs> okay? Not always what you expect from the universe. So this opens a little bit your mind and helps you to adjust your own expectations about the others, okay? And what you, and this also allows you to see the things that are coming because I am, if I am focused in the coffee, I will never see the cookies you offer me. Yeah. But if I am just open and I know that it may return back in a way that you, the universe provides in that moment, I will be able to really enjoy and I will make room for receiving the things in the way that come. I, I will become more flexible with my expectations. I will let go of many of my expectations and just nicely receive what comes and the way it comes. Mm. So you can really help yourself to be happier because you are open and flexible mm. to receive the things in the way that come. And of course, everything feels a lot lighter as well when you're when it's that kind of exchange of your energy, and you you yeah. feel 
like you as you said earlier on about the love that comes with it you know it's like you feel that you um you, you've love for all of the other people that you're doing this for and then it you know there's less of the your the resentment and that you would get you know when when it's a, a chalai a lo lower form of exchange exactly mm -hmm. um the, the tray this way of exchanging is really as you say a lower kind of interchange the highest kind of interchange is the, just an open and flexible way you are just interchanging with the universe you are offering what you have like in our rituals of offering you know, our despacho ceremonies we are giving something and to this ritual of building things with little elements and they make an offering of the despacho of high white we are triggering reciprocity with the universe we are sending some energy and, and then later naturally we are going to receive something in return okay. so it's all about that it's all about reciprocity as we see it yeah beautiful <laughs> thank you so much yes. for this. oh you're very welcome and thank you for this great idea you have of having this talk <laughs> yeah. that was a great idea well it helps me a lot just to get things into my head and you know i think with um some of the the reactions i've got from the other videos people are you know oh that makes more sense now you know that you can fine-tune something and make you know, it understand it a bit more you know so thank and the you. questions always help us to connect the dots and have a better idea of the things as they are and well maybe found some details that we were missing yeah absolutely yeah thank you it's, it's like oh. a private question and answers time <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much yeah, thank you